Hi, I'm Daniel Zangle with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb. And today we're doing our first in a series of videos comparing the various PRP kits on the market. Uh, so this is based on a third party study. And this uh, particular video, we're talking about the Eclipse kit mm -hmm. versus the m -Site kit. Uh, so just to give a disclaimer right off the bat, here at PRP Labs, we are an authorized distributor for m -Site as of making this video, let that be known. Um, but we, we do wanna talk about the, the limited research that is out there comparing these kits so people can make an informed decision. And uh, Don is gonna get really <laughs> deep into the weeds in just a second here um, about some issues that the Eclipse kit might have. I just wanna start off by saying my, my main issue with the Eclipse kit is that it does not produce highly concentrated PRP. Yeah. And, and you can look at simple math with an Eclipse kit. They have a 22 milliliter kit that uses 20 milliliters of blood to create 11 milliliters of PRP. And you, you do the math going from 20 down to 11, even if it was perfect exactly. at recovering platelets, <laughs> we're only talking about a 1.8 roughly times platelet concentration, if it was perfect. Um, and, and really less than two times concentrate is, is almost never used in clinical literature. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so there's, it, from my opinion and, and what I've seen in the research that doesn't really constitute PRP. Um, and then there's actually more reasons to believe that these Eclipse kits are, are not actually making PRP in a true sense. Um, so Don, can you explain a little bit about what you've learned, what you've found out about these uh, Eclipse PRP kits? Absolutely. So, um, so these Eclipse kits use a gel separator versus the M-Site kits that actually use two rounds of centrifugation. Mm -hmm. um, right, the Eclipse kit, it only spins one, one time. One time, right. after, after um, you mix it in with this polymer that I'm gonna talk about. So when blood is collected from the patient, it's actually mixed with an anticoagulant mm -hmm. and a soluble polymer. Okay. Um, so this polymer has a density that is between um, the average density of the solution that contains the pure PRP. Mm -hmm. So in theory, this is what we'd want to get at the end. We'd want platelets, we'd want plasma, and then we'd want all the growth factors uh -huh. and other good proteins that are found in there. Right, right. Um, and so, so this polymer is between the density of pure PRP and then everything else that you don't want. So this okay. includes uh, the red blood cells, right. white blood cells and um, anything else that you might want to exclude, like uh, neutrophiles. Or right, something. so this is the premise of these Eclipse kits, is they have this polymer gel that is mixed in with the blood and then it's supposed to stratify all the platelets exactly. and good stuff. Exactly, but create like a hard barrier between okay. them. Um, now, I don't know what the actual chemical composition of the polymer is because this information is not available right. uh, um, to online or right anything, yeah so. i've looked on their website as well can't figure out what this polymer is exactly yeah. so in a perfect world this sounds like a great idea right right like oh let's put a physical barrier between them so that we have pure separation for pure prp yeah and um, then everything else afterwards you know yeah. however cells are not perfect so mm -hmm. they vary in size shape and also the temperature, pressure, and the composition of the liquid they're suspended in will change how they behave in the centrifuge. Okay, so um, what does that mean for these Eclipse kits? So that means that, um, so, these, so how substances will sediment in the centrifuge is uh, determined by examining something called their specific gravities. Okay. So this is just the ratio of the weight of whatever volume you want, say you want platelets, mm -hmm to the weight of um, something that is their reference. Uh, say, most people usually use water, and I, I guess since it's it's close enough that, that yeah, so the specific gravity of water is one. Anyway, this okay. is just a way of like normalizing everything so that you can make um, uh, informed decisions about how uh, things will separate out in solution. Okay. Um, so basically, the higher the specific gravity, uh -huh. the denser the substance, so the more it will be drawn down Got it. during centrifugation. Got it. Okay. So red blood cells must have a high gravity because we'll see them go to the bottom. Exactly. Okay. So in the solution, red blood cells have the highest specific gravity, and this is at 1.095. Okay. Um, and platelets, out of all the cells in there, mind mm -hmm. you, cells, 
uh, they have the lightest specific gravity, or the lowest, I guess, 1.032. Okay. Um, so this means, like you said, red blood cells will be pushed to the bottom, and mm -hmm. white blood, I mean, uh, the platelets will uh, be pushed to the top. Right. However, uh, the other components, particularly the white blood cells, the plasma, and the serum, mm -hmm. Uh, they all fall within a spectrum of specific gravities. There's a range, for instance, for white blood cells, yeah. and that range actually differs between men and women. Okay. Um, so there's a range of specific gravities for uh, white blood cells. Um, and this range actually overlaps with, with the platelets. Okay. So if the manufacturers have a polymer that they're using that targets the upper end of the spectrum, Right for the white blood cells right. to get as many white blood cells as possible yeah. out, then you're gonna have overlap with the platelets. Right, I see. So they could unintentionally be trapping some of those platelets underneath exactly. this polymer gel. So that, I suspect that's what's occur occurring. And also any deviation mm -hmm. in whole blood count um, or even a high concentration of proteins in the plasma yeah. is gonna change the specific gravity of the plasma okay. itself. And so then you're going to get large variations in where the polymer will end up uh, forming. Got it. And, and what we do know is these eclipse kits, and this is based on the research, and, and, and there's a, you know, a table that kind of outlines this on the screen mm -hmm. right now. And what we see is that these eclipse kits are very effective at trapping red blood cells. They have basically no red blood cells exactly. above the polymer. And, and the white blood cells too. Exactly. Which is why I think that this polymer is designed to trap as many white blood cells as possible. Right. However, platelets also have a spectrum. What the number I said earlier mm -hmm. was just the average. Right, right. So, and so <laughs> if, if they're trapping everything of a certain uh, molecular density mm -hmm. and they want to make sure to get all the white blood cells but there are also platelets in that range they exactly. will also be trapping those platelets yeah so say you have this many platelets and then the white blood cells are kind of going here the polymer yeah. will settle right exactly. there yeah and and so what we'll see with these eclipse kits is they get this very clear amber um, plasma that a lot of physicians doctors might associate with high quality PRP exactly because oftentimes we're trying to get a very low uh, red blood cell count in the mm -hmm. PRP because red blood cells are associated with more pain with injections or bruising. Uh, so generally we want to have PRP that has very low blood cell counts. Um, what a lot of these doctors seemingly don't realize is that there is evidence to suggest that that clear, that clear nice looking amber uh, plasma that these Eclipse kits make is actually platelet poor plasma. Exactly, it, it, and it's probably just a lot of serum, which is proteins. Right, right, right. yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe there could be some therapeutic benefits, uh -huh. but in a true sense, based on this, this study, this third party study that was done, it, it suggests that the quote unquote PRP produced by Eclipse Kits has about half the platelet concentration of a patient's normal blood baseline. And this, this kind of makes sense whenever you put it um, in terms of physics, based mm -hmm. off of the specific gravities. Right. You know, because of the overlap, because there's so much variation in human um, whole blood counts, mm -hmm. uh, there's just no simple one-step solution for this, which is why I genuinely do believe that centrifuging it twice is just a better method. Because right. Physics says there is no possible way you could get a solid separation between all the components because of the overlapping specific gravities. Right. Even if you left it sitting there for eternity. Yeah, it would still never stratify in a <laughs> exactly. perfect way. Right. It would be, you know, like like if you were looking at strat like uh, I don't know, sediment mm -hmm. in rock. Right. You know, it's all layered over each other. Absolutely. So. And so I think Going from the Eclipse kits to M site, the, the hugest difference we're seeing, I mean, uh, right, Eclipse is single spin, M site's a double spin mm -hmm. process. So it takes you a little longer. Also, the M site kits cost more. A lot of reason, the main reason most people go with Eclipse is because they're very cheap. Yeah. Well, there's a reason for that. It doesn't look like they're actually making PRP. Now, with the M site kits, uh, we'll see in this study, there's a higher platelet recovery rate. They have about an 81% platelet recovery rate and you start with a larger amount of blood, mm -hmm. you're going, for example, in their 60 milliliter kit with m -Site, you go from 50 milliliters of blood down to about seven. And that gets you almost a seven times platelet concentration. Uh, and you compare that to Eclipse going from a 20 milliliter blood draw down to 11. 
with a 30% platelet recovery rate, and that's how we arrive at these figures suggesting that they only have about half the platelets of, of baseline blood levels. And particularly if you're not adding an activator, then you're basically going to be injecting the patient with uh, like blood plasma and serum. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, I mean, if you added an activator, it might possibly be useful for a topical application. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, other than that, like I, besides maybe just like flushing out the site that you need right. to. And, and that's the thing, maybe there's, there's mm -hmm. therapeutic benefits. Maybe just by centrifuging the plasma long enough, they're activating those remaining platelets and getting growth factor. But at the end of the day, it doesn't look like this is PRP. So no. if you're a doctor or a nurse or anyone who's offering your patients PRP, platelet rich plasma, I, I think it's your duty to make sure you're using equipment that can actually make PRP. And I believe too that um, I, it's one of it's one of the national uh, national societies for like doctors or clinicians mm -hmm. or something. But they actually have you know a, a definition of what constitutes a therapeutic dose right. of PRP, and yeah. this falls below the therapeutic dose. Right. So, yeah. okay, Don. Well, thank you for helping us uh, talk about the difference between the Eclipse kit and the M site kit. Uh, we're gonna have uh, some more videos coming up talking about the other. PRP kits on the market, so stick around.